Police need your help to find this person accused of a road rage shooting. In two hours, the Douglas County School Board will hold a special meeting. We're learning more about what led up to the former superintendent's firing. And ready or not, it's time to spring it forward. This weekend, you'll lose an hour of sleep. Uh, it is time change weekend, which throws a lot of people off, yes. but there are plenty of reasons to celebrate, one of which is going to be the weather yes. helping welcome in spring. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. Yeah, I'm Nicole Brady. Lots of events happening mm -hmm. uh, to kind of kick off the spring break season. Lisa Hidalgo is here with a look at the weekend forecast. Yeah, sometimes this time of year I'm not on your favorite list because either I've messed with uh, your plans to travel or St. Patrick's Day Parade, but this weather is beautiful this weekend. No issues. We're looking at, at teens this morning, close to about 30 by noon, and then we're going to hit highs in the low to mid 30s this afternoon. It'll be just above freezing today, still on the chilly side, but things are warming up and that trend is going to continue through the weekend. Weekend. Right now it feels like one in Denver, still obviously a lot of snow on the ground. We'll see more melting today and a lot more melting both Saturday and Sunday as those temperatures climb. Right now you're at 13 in Lakewood, 15 in Commerce City, and 8 to the north there in Firestone. We're going to hit highs though today right around 30 to about 37 degrees. A little cold in the mountains still, some teens and 20s there, but it's really going to warm up statewide starting tomorrow. We'll have a closer look at that weekend forecast uh, coming up, plus when our next cold front's going to hit. Micah? All right, sounds good, Lisa. We've got a lot going on on the traffic map today. As you can see, it's got a lot of dots happening. We'll start northwest of town. We've got a crash here on US 36 at Sheridan. I'm learning that this is impacting westbound lanes. Three lanes are blocked, so that's causing quite a few backups. I'll work on getting a drive time for you here in a few minutes. We also have a crash at 6th Avenue and uh, Alameda. That's impacting northbound lanes. Quick check of your drive times. Northbound I-225 from I-25 to 70, 13 minutes. Southbound I-225 from I-70 to I-25, quite a bit slower at 18 minutes. And if you're going to or from the airport, running about 20 minutes in both directions. Thank you, Micah. We'll take a look at your screen here this morning. Commerce City Police need your help finding this woman. She's accused of shooting another driver during a fit of road rage. Yeah, Denver 7's Veronica Costa joins us now, and Veronica police say she is armed and dangerous. Get a good look at this photo. This is the woman that Commerce City Police say shot another woman in an alley, again, after a fit of road rage. 24-year-old Destiny Edwards, she also goes by Destiny Salazar. So let's run you through what exactly happened yesterday. Police say Edwards and another woman, they were involved in this road rage incident. The two ended up in a car crash in an alley. This was near 62nd Avenue and Kearney Street. Both women had gotten out of their vehicles before Edwards shot the other and then took off. This isn't Edwards' first time in trouble either. Court records show Edwards has a long criminal history. She had an open warrant for motor vehicle theft from a February incident. She served prison time for motor vehicle theft as well. Now, Edwards considered armed and dangerous again, so if you see her police asking you get in contact with them right away, you can do it in one of two ways, either through the Commerce City tip line or Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. In studio, I'm Veronica Costa, number 7. Thank you, Veronica. We do have a follow up to some breaking news we brought you yesterday. Police have arrested four people, including three juveniles, for a deadly shooting at an Aurora hotel. A teenage boy, a 16 year old, was killed and four others injured after a shooting Wednesday night at the Quality Inn off Uray Street near I-70. All four suspects are being held for first degree murder. A lot of people were scrambling to stay warm in single digit temperatures this week. A group of activists tried to keep one of Denver's rec centers open as a warming shelter for the homeless past operating hours last night. The city opened all of its rec centers as shelters this week during the cold snap. Police were called to the Carla Madison Rec Center off East Colfax, where they offered six homeless people vouchers for a motel for the night and a ride to get them there safely. Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters is due for a pretrial hearing this morning at 10 a.m. She was released from jail yesterday after posting a $25,000 bond. Peters and Deputy Clerk Belinda Nisley were indicted by a grand jury on multiple charges for allegedly tampering with the county's elections equipment. This morning, the Douglas County School Board will hold a special meeting to discuss its next steps. After a judge ruled the new majority members of the board violated the purpose of open meetings laws. The special meeting will be held at 10 a.m. A judge this week found the board members created a workaround to those open meetings laws by having a series of one on one discussions before telling former Superintendent Corey Wise that he could resign or be fired.
Want to let you know we are expecting to hear from President Biden here in just a few minutes about additional consequences for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And when he starts speaking, we will bring that to you live. But the president is expected to strip Russia of its most favored nation status for international trade, which would pave the way for higher taxes on goods coming out of Russia that are being sold across the world. It comes as Russian troops inch closer to Ukraine's capital. The U.S. defense officials say they are roughly nine miles away from the city center of Kiev now. Overnight, Vladimir Putin also approved bringing in volunteer fighters from the Middle East and other places to join their advances. U.S. officials believe Russia is recruiting Syrians experienced in urban combat. Meanwhile, U.S. lawmakers approved funding to help Ukraine in its latest spending package. The $1.5 trillion bill is on its way to the to the president's desk. More than $13 billion of that money will go towards military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. Denver's Department of Health is issuing a new alert over street drugs laced with fentanyl, telling everyone to be cautious. It says officials have seen an increase of drugs containing the synthetic, op synthetic opioid in the Denver area. It's 50 times more potent than heroin. The department advises people to carry Narcan or carry test strips. And it is important to know there's help available if you're struggling with addiction. For years, one Colorado woman thought her life would be ruled forever by meth and alcohol. But after overcoming her own addiction, she's helping others facing the same battles at a treatment center in the heart of Rhino. Here's Denver 7's Jessica Crawford. With the feeling of calm that surrounds her, <laughs> You'd never imagine the chaos that overtook Christabel Stansberry's life. I experienced homelessness, I experienced domestic violence, I experienced um, being used in ways that I wouldn't want anybody to be used. A heartbreaking pattern that started when she was just a kid. I was a methamphetamine addict for a while and then later I just drank alcohol abusively. Stansberry battled addiction for years. I got to learn about the the way drugs and alcohol react with my brain. Like they light up my brain. They fill receptors and my brain acts a certain way towards the substances that maybe it won't affect another person. Part of what put her on the path to recovery, addressing her underlying trauma and finding other things that brought a spark into her life. She took a recovery program that had her volunteer with a business. I started with you know, implementing a billing system for someone. And, you know, I just started with these smaller tasks and then I started building on that and building on that and building on that. And, you know, I found out that I was good in this area of being able to put the building blocks together for a business. And then also being able to bring a very unique perspective to the table of somebody who's, you know, like gone through this. She opened Chrysalis Continuing Care in November of 2020. This is our group room. Bringing that same perspective to Brett Mendes, who says treatment couldn't have come at a better time. Things have not gone well. You know, nobody shows up at a place like this because life is working out. One of the things that you said that really stuck out to me that was so powerful was the importance of living a life that is worth staying sober for. Can you talk about what that is for you? Taking the time to invest in relationships, um, being willing to promote them in my life to, to a, a level of status. A lot of those things are not just valuable, but they're challenging. Addressing the root causes of addiction, then taking on challenges that could lead to a different path. I really wanted to do something that was big. And now she's helping others do big things too. There has to be a safe place for people to let down those walls and truly be able to recover. And if you know someone who is battling addiction, we have resources and how you can get in touch with Chrysalis Continuing Care on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Red Rocks is going back to the basics, why they won't use new palm reading ticketing technology. Mm -hmm. And a family is building their beach. Why the location of this lighthouse may surprise you.